welcome to the Village Green NBTV show on the environment. I'm Nancy Gardner, your host, and if I look a little disheveled, it's because I am. I had to run around this morning. I couldn't find my car keys. But we still have got the program together. We're going to start and talk about some dunes, the dune restoration project that the city's been working on and how it's succeeding. And then we're going to do a little art. So stay with us. Hey, I'm here with Bob Stein of the Public Works Department. We're back here to revisit a project we saw oh, some months ago when it was just beginning, I think. And it's all about dune restoration. And let's start with why? Why should we care about dune restoration? Well, in the past, perhaps the city has not been uh, paying enough attention to the importance of dunes, and now we're educating ourselves. And so if you see in the background here, we have these, these dune structures covered by plants. And some of those plants are native, they're beech burr. But a lot of it is this um, ice plant from uh, South, uh, South Africa. And so um, I'm learning that when you have non-native plants, that pollinators don't find any use for them and birds don't have any, any use for that habitat. So uh, when the Coastal Commission uh, notified these owners uh, 10 years ago that they had some encroachments on the beach to be removed, uh, we, uh, they asked us, the city to take the lead on the removals and we've now completed all the removals successfully. But we've also wanted to come back and restore the area with some kind of native plants. And prior to that, we had lawns, we had non-native flowering plants, etc. And so, quite frankly, it didn't look that bad from you know an ornamental plant point of view. Oh, it actually looked very pretty from an ornamental point of view. Yes, it, it did. <laughs> so we came back, and um, we didn't want to use the beech burr because it's prickly, and we wanted to remove all the ice plants. So the question is, what do we do with our restoration area here? And so I don't know if you can swivel the camera to take any in, into that. Okay. So uh, we planted a hydroseed mix with six different species of native flowers. And the first year, the only one that really popped was this, um, this primrose with a yellow flower. And we must have had 100,000 of these plants that popped. And in May and June, we just had covered with yellow flowers. It looked great. And then summer hit. And this plant even though it's a perennial, goes into a dormant phase, mm -hmm. and it turns brown. Right, and which so many of our natives do, which is why so many people don't want to use them in their yards, because there's a period of like, they're dead, they look horrible. <laughs> right, and so people say, well, that, those are weeds, and mm -hmm. so one of the reasons we're having this little uh, television segment here is to alert people that, yes, we are still pulling weeds, there are weeds that are popping up here, they will be popping up for the next five years, we're gonna be on top of it. But the, the primrose here, their roots are viable and they're gonna come back next spring. But also next spring, we expect the other types of native plants to also start popping. Uh, so we're gonna get a mixture of plants and that the, the other plants that are gonna be um, popping up next year will stay green longer, like the beech bird. The beech bird tends to stay green all year long. Okay, all right, well, so let, let, let's go back even a little bit farther. So dunes and the planting of dunes are really going to be helpful in terms of sea level rise because they build up the beaches and the plants then keep the sand a little bit more in place. Isn't that true? Even more than that, the, so the, it keeps the, the dunes in place, but it also helps to grow the dunes. And we've taken a look at um, uh, aerial photos from 2006 and 2014, and what we see is the dunes shift a little bit, they grow a little bit, and the plants kind of stay on top and keep them stable. And uh, we had that big flood back in 2020, July 4th, where uh, the water overtopped the beach and came into someone's home and flowed through the home mm -hmm. into the street. And so uh, he wasn't protected by the dune system, but his neighbors were. So we envision that we're gonna have to start maintaining and growing our dune system because it's really the only feasible way to, uh, to block sea level rise in the next, say, 50 or 60 years. Longer term, there's going to have to be structural changes. Houses will have to be built on stilts. People have to abandon their first floors, things like that. But, um, but the dune system really will, ser will serve us well. And it is yeah, I think it, what I always look at these things is they buy us time for a lot of other things rather than just leaping right into seawalls or something. We've got, as you say, maybe decades of protection here right. with, with them. And they don't necessarily always look at their best, but they will be looking better 
as more and more of the plants come in? Because I, I would think with all the rain we had this year, I mean, that everything would have sprouted, but, but just primarily the primroses, huh? Yeah, so I, uh, being a, an engineer, not a botanist, I can't <laughs> explain that. Uh, but uh, I'm assured by our botanist consultants that uh, we'll start seeing a, a better mix of plants and that uh, the weeds will become uh, less prevalent and give the plants, even a, the native plants, a, a greater realm to Okay, well, let's, go, let's look at some of the new planting. So I'm seeing, now this is a pretty one. Uh, what is this called? You know I'm an engineer, right? Yeah. Okay, this <laughs> I is have a, the has idea. <laughs> the pretty uh, sort of very pale lavender flowers. And then this must be the primrose. Correct. The yellow. Yes. And so we see a mixture of the whatever the lavender one is and the primrose. And then some others, um, you see some, some green. So you, I, see, I see it say three or four different kinds of, of plants in here. Uh, and as you say, some of it looks pretty brown right now. But... You can see it's still a lot of the of the the primroses. They have must have a long growth spell. Well, there's apparently a little more moisture in the sand in those areas, and that's okay. why they're staying greener. Um, but the caution is, uh, we do. The caution is that we still have weeds out here, mm -hmm. and so that's why we have professionals coming out. They're able to Identify. look at the at the dormant native plants and differentiate them from the weeds. Okay. But how would you rate this in terms of is it a success, do you think? I mean, are we on the right path with, with the restoration and these plantings? Oh, yeah, I think we're well underway. Uh, in some ways, we're uh, the leading edge here. No one's ever tried a, a mass hydroceding of the beach like this. Uh -huh. But the fact that we had such good growth the first year is just a real good sign that in five years, this place is going to be lovely. So, and as I recall, didn't we put in some potted plants or something? I mean, that not, not all of them was hydro seed, wasn't that That's okay? correct. So we do have some potted plants out here, and you can see like the salt bush here, these grasses, those uh -huh. are part of the potted plants here. Okay, and how have they fared? Well, they've done pretty well. I mean, there's a lot of uh, trampling that goes on here. Yeah. But, uh, you know, as you can see, the roots are establishing and that the grasses will start to grow up. And we're going to come back in November with some su supplemental plants that we're going to plant throughout the whole length of the property. So did the city do uh, much irrigation before the rain started? Or? The only, you know, we don't have an irrigation system out right. here, so we have what we have call a water buffalo. Right. It's just a truck with a tank behind uh -huh. it, and we use that to, 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 to water. But these are native plants, and once they become established, they will not need any water at all. But the first year, a little bit of uh, help is... is and is and do you know, I mean, I'm looking at the trash truck cleaning, you know, grooming the beach. We do a great job of grooming the beach. We have groomed it so much that we eliminated some, most of the dunes at one point. Um, but obviously we don't want that in here. So is this hand cleaned in terms of uh, trash and everything? Yeah, so it's all it's all hand work. And um, as you're, you're right, that in the past we've done beach grooming and perhaps in the longer term, we will have to be a little more careful and selective as we start growing the dune system. And mm -hmm. again, there isn't a city policy on that yet, uh, but I think uh, as there's more and more action here and the homeowners become more and more concerned, there's gonna be some kind of perhaps central authority at the city that will to look at some of the issues here. I mean, dogs, clearly we would like to have them on the beach, but at the same time, some people don't want the dogs on the beach. Right. So there's some <laughs> yeah. kind of balance here that we're gonna to have to, to work on. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, there's always policies that when you have, particularly when we have a lot of visitors and uh, they don't necessarily understand as well as maybe the residents do what we're, we're trying to accomplish here. But are you getting support from the, from the locals? The, uh, the, the beachfront owners here have really been excellent. I mean, it's kind of a traumatic process for I'm them. Sure they've lost yeah. their landscaping, yeah. but they've been very supportive. And now that we have the encroachments gone, people are uh, respecting the res restoration area. They're not coming out and replanting or putting out their benches and things like that. So really, they've been uh, really surprisingly supportive of the project. Well, that's great. And that's a, a, a salute to them because, as you say, they they felt like it was their front yard and, and they, they lost it. But this is an interesting, very interesting pilot project. And I think it has great promise for protecting our homes and keeping them off stilts as long as possible. I hope you'll come out next year. We can do another follow-up interview to see how we're progressing. We will. We will. Cool. All right. Thanks, Bob. Sure. <laughs> I'm here with my very good friend, Heather Zizlak, from the Newport Bay Conservancy. Oh, hi. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning. And 
it's art time. It is, it's that time of year, July when summertime kicks out. These artists have been painting throughout the season. And last Saturday, we had this quick draw event with the artwork. Uh, explain CB9. that, quick draw, because you know, we yeah. think quick draw. I know, these artists only have about two and a half hours to go out with a blank canvas, and they come back two hours later with these masterpieces. So they did these last Saturday morning, and these are gonna be on display through this Friday. That I mean. is amazing. I can see and we maybe need... doing a, a watercolor in that uh. period, because because you tend to be quicker, quicker but I mean, mm -hmm. some of these oils and pastels that have looked like they I would mean, take hours and hours to do. Looks like that pastel, they could have been yeah. there for five, six hours. But really the point of painting in plain air and outside is that they have to do it quick. They have to do it in two hours because that sunset or that sunrise <laughs> is gonna look a lot different. Right? Well, yeah. or you can take the photo and cheat. Oh, that would, <laughs> see, this is why I don't paint. They would not like us. <laughs> well, there are some really beautiful pieces here but you've got this isn't all the art this isn't it yes all this right. is just what they did on saturday let's take right, a let's look go at see some what of the else one. is here okay so now these weren't necessarily painted in two hours no but <laughs> they were painted outside yeah all these that are is painted the point of plain air right, absolutely outside not in the studio not from sketches or anything and these are all like the ones out front these are all for sale Absolutely, yes. A lot of the artists, they paint in these beautiful spaces like the Back Bay and they want to give back throughout the year. So a portion of each proceed of these sales from the artwork are going to ben benefit the Back Bay. And that's also something that we, you know, like, oh, you get a beautiful work of art and you're making a contribution to the environment. Let's uh, talk about your win-wins. And again, do you find that you have the same artists or do you get new artists each year or how does that work? You know, it's it's a process. We have some of ours that sort of graduate and go down to Laguna for some of the bigger <laughs> art festivals. But they really, you know, throughout the season, they do meetups with each other and get to bounce off and work and learn off of each other. And that's some of the benefit of the SoCal Papa group. Um, and here throughout the spring, uh, before the art show, they were all kind of meeting up. This is the best of OC Parks and the Back Bay. So half of these artworks are done in other Orange County Park oh, okay. properties. Uh -huh. So we've got um, beautiful Irvine, a panorama of Irvine Regional Park, one of the historical parks uh -huh. in the neighborhood, to some down to the Back Bay, or we have other parks showcasing Santiago Oaks, the Dana Point Harbor, kind of a lot, paying tribute to a lot of these beautiful open spaces in Orange County. That's great. And so they're for sale for a specific period. Yes, they are on sale this week from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Peter and Mary Moose Center um, through Friday. And then over the weekend, we have all these artists then go out and display all of their work on the patio. Right, and this, uh, this may not even be sh shown by then, but then you have oftentimes other works for sale just throughout the year. Throughout the year, so if you've missed the sale, uh, because Ed didn't edit it soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ed always does a perfect job. Um, but if you miss the sale, you can always come out to the Moose Center and find a number of works. Uh, beautiful original artworks, either these, if they don't go for the weekend, but we have three artists that we rotate and highlight quarterly, as well as some pa unframed paintings. You know, these paintings can get a little hefty on the wallet, so sometimes it looks a little bit more reasonable to get an unframed one, so uh -huh. there's unframed work. And then you can frame it so However decor, you want, right. exactly, yeah. down to your decor. So Well, I'm, I'm just looking at these, and they're just... I paint. Um, no, I don't. I should paint. <laughs> like I paint houses, but I've tried watercolors. I've tried pastels, and when I see the workmanship and just the the creativity and the beauty of these. It makes me appreciate it all the more because I, I know how hard it is. It's oh, not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I've tried two art classes, and um, it, you won't see that for sale here. No. <laughs> so anything else about these that you want to talk to us about as far as... Well, I mean, I, I just, I am always so struck. I mean, at the Conservancy, we always worry about protecting and preserving the bay. Um, and this is another reason why we do it. You know, it's not just for recreation. It's not just for the plants and animals, but it is an open space for artists to relax and enjoy and come up with some amazing pieces of artwork. Yeah. All right, yeah. well, on another note altogether, Talk about the Conservancy. What are you guys doing? How are your programs going? Because I know everybody was, you know, frustrated during the COVID thing when 
people couldn't come here and you couldn't go out to them and all I that. know. Well, we did during COVID finish um, a 16 minute underwater documentary, Newport Art Bay, that if this artwork wasn't here, you'd be able to see in this <laughs> okay. theater. Um, so definitely after the art show, um, anytime throughout when the center's open, Monday through, or Tuesday through Sunday from 10 to four, you can see this 16 minute documentary where, you know, during COVID we can't go out really and we can't be around people. So we took one diver, one boat, a captain, and one scout uh, <laughs> to go out and film what's underwater because I'm not putting on a scuba suit. <laughs> I am a terrestrial, but they documented some of the beautiful um, organisms that we have underwater uh, between Catalina and the Upper Newport Bay. It's really fantastic. Oh, so well, that sounds that's something to uh, definitely check out here too, um, or check out Big Canyon. I know. Um, yeah, because you guys have been very involved big, with that. You know, How's it's it all coming? about updating habitat and really bringing back, sometimes bringing back that natural habitat to help the diversity of all the plants and animals because we don't have a lot of these coastal zones. They've been developed. Um, so anytime we can help help the habitat and help encourage people to recreate responsibly. That's what we've been trying to do. So uh, some of our new naturalists here put together a bike tour for the first time in a while oh, too. That's, that's yeah, that's great, okay. Absolutely, we had our new naturalists in a friendly composite competition <laughs> where they pitched programs that they wanted to see happen at the bay and one of those happened to be a bike tour. So uh, some of our new naturalists put that together in that launch. So hopefully you'll get to see another bike tour in the future. So that, you think that might become a regular part? So, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then we also did a full moon hike. Uh, we had a bunch of naturalists that love the idea of seeing what's out here and exploring more at night. Nice. So we had one of our NASA scientists come out and explain more about the moon and why it is so, shines so bright on the full moons. And then we had more descriptions about some of the animals that like to hang out at yeah. night too. Did you have kids come? Oh yes, we had a don't couple Don't you hundred. remember when you were little the, uh, to do something at night and outside how exciting it was oh my gosh yes especially well being from the midwest being outside <laughs> and capturing like fireflies yeah. and stuff like that but it's the exploring some of that nature and night so the full moon hike and the full moon program really did that and i think the naturalists did a wonderful job and so hopefully that's another program that we'll rec we'll do again in the future and then you have your stand 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 standards like the kayak tours? Correct, kayak tours every Saturday morning. Um, we still have another uh, fundraiser, Gourmet by the Bay, the third Saturday in August. And then- oh, uh, that, What's that about? That's, oh yes, yeah. so this is one of the ways we fundraise, but we also like to eat, <laughs> and we also like to drink a little wine yeah, and uh -huh. have dinner out on the patio. So a Gourmet by the Bay is just that, where it's a fundraiser dinner out on the patio. We have some live music, some silent auction prizes, is we play a little fun and games. Our naturalists get you into trouble a little uh -huh. bit, um, but that gets you some other prizes potentially. So it's a fun evening for all, absolutely. And it becomes a fundraiser for the Bay uh, because COVID was really hard. We didn't get to connect with everybody like we normally do. And uh, we love to see people out and we're glad to host all these events again. Well, it's great to have the Conservancy so active. This is such a, just such a wonderful, area and I, i'm amazed that people still don't always know as much about it as we they should yeah we hear that every day somebody comes into the nature center runs into us out on trail or out on the water um, and they just don't know it existed or to how expansive it is you know 11 miles all the way around this hidden gem throughout these bluffs in the in the bay and in newport beach it's really fantastic yeah, if you haven't been to the mooth center you can drive along Irvine Boulevard not know it's and there. It was very it. cleverly designed to sit really into the bluff, but it's a beautiful building and it gives such a view. Oh, yes. From, of, of the bay. This is this is probably the best view of the bay because you get all the way down. I think so. And we've had more cliff swallows than ever nest oh, this really? summer. We oh, might have to fun. take a little shot of that. But uh, sometimes you're just sitting in the Anirondack chairs and these <laughs> cliff swallows have migrated here from South America. And you just, it, in past years, we've seen maybe a half a dozen. But this year, there were over 30 nests outside. So it's fun to just see that, like these cliff swallows found the million dollar 
their views and they yeah. made their home here. It's oh, really that is, fantastic. Oh, that is really neat. <laughs> yeah. Well, any other animals or birds you saw a lot more of this year? I know. Well, we did see way more of these cliff swallow nests and saw an increase of that. And we've seen an increase in some of our endangered, we have one endangered plant species, the salt marsh bird's beak, or we have, have also have a couple of rare species. But really, because of the super bloom this year, that salt marsh bird's beak really took off too. Oh, so it's nice. really wonderful. You can see yeah, glimmers seen? of it along Back Bay Drive, if you park in Big Canyon and go for a lock along Back Bay Drive, you'll see some of it. It almost looks like it's got a purple hue to it, but it comes out to a white flower with a little pink or orange beak that's supposed to represent <laughs> a little bird's beak. It's just gorgeous to yeah, see. Are some you of doing that. some seed saving with? We are. We're doing some collection. Um, we put together a special collection permit with Fish and Wildlife to do some extra seed collection um, throughout this next season and, and the following one in order to help us with Big Canyon, that last phase of that restoration project over there at the mouth of Big Canyon. Okay. So, anything else about uh, that's up and new or old that we need oh, to know well, about? You know what? Throughout the summertime, we kind of work on some of our fundraisers and just have people come out and enjoy the Moose Center or go for a kayaking tour. And then when we get back to the school year, we'll have Finn, the Fostering Interest in Nature, the Overnight Kids Camp, come back to the Newport Dunes area. So we're really getting ready. Um, and that's in the fall? You that's say? in the fall, yes. Yeah. So we bring out students. And then we're, the summertime is really about um, redoing some of our programs making them better and so that when we come to the fall and we start educating thousands of kids again we're ready for them. But you still have a couple of classes for the summer right? Absolutely yes we have some art classes going on throughout this week we've got one going on right now a couple kids and adult classes through Friday um, and then we'll have other projects and, and classes go on throughout the year whether it's this whether it's a new science program who knows what our naturalists will come up with. And for more information, the web address is? Is newportbay.org. Okay, yes. newportbay.org. There's so much here. Uh, if you haven't been, you must come. <laughs> and if you haven't been in a while, hey, don't come forget back. just don't how be beautiful it is out here and mm -hmm. so many different options of engaging with nature. Thank you, Heather. Uh, thanks, Nancy. <laughs> That's our show. And until next time, I hope you'll all work on making our village green. Thank you.